Antimicrobial resistance has been defined as one of the major health issues of the 21st century. Our research is looking at how bacteria become resistant to antibiotics which we use to treat infections. My name is Dr Will Gaze and I work at the University of Exeter Medical School, the European Centre for Environment and Human Health. We're getting to a point now where some bacteria are resistant to nearly all antibiotics and some actually are resistant to all of the drugs that we have to treat infection. And more people will die from what we now think is very common and easy to treat infections. We tend to think that antibiotics are only used in clinical medicine, but actually over half of all antibiotics are used in agriculture. And these are used to treat infection, to prevent disease, and also as growth promoters in many parts of the world. After we take antibiotics, or antibiotics are given to farm animals, the resistant bacteria and the antibiotics themselves are excreted into the environment, either through the wastewater treatment system or from runoff from agricultural land. So a lot of people have said, well, so what if there are these resistant reservoirs of bacteria in the environment? You know, what effect does that have on our health? So one of the pieces of research we've been doing is looking in coastal bathing waters at exposure to antibiotic resistant bacteria. And what we found is that there are millions of exposure events every year to antibiotic resistant bacteria, but actually to quite small numbers of those bacteria. We've recently been funded by NERC to look at the processes that go on in river systems in more detail, to look at the diversity of resistance genes. Our research has informed advice to the government on their inquiry into antibiotic resistance, has resulted in advice to the Chief Medical Officer and has informed the Antibiotic Resistance Review Commission by David Cameron. If we can show that these antibiotics do drive evolution resistance at environmental concentrations, that may inform future versions of the Water Framework Directive. And we're hoping that this will lead to a more sort of international approach to solving this major issue.